Before we take a detailed look at exactly how indirect taxes can be used to help tackle market failure, it's worth thinking about how they fit into the broad spectrum of possible policy options available to governments. So for this little activity, you're going to need to just grab yourself a piece of paper um, and take a look at the chart that is on the screen there for you. Now we've lifted, listed on the left hand side a number of types of market failure and then on the middle column just a little overview of some of the consequences of that type of market failure and therefore why a government might want to intervene. So your first step is just to take a moment or two to read through those types of market failure and their consequences and then complete the right hand column. Now you can just do this on a bit of paper by your side um, if you like. So try to think about two possible interventions that a government could use to correct that market failure. It's probably worth pausing the video at this point because in just a minute or so, I'm going to show you the uh, some suggested answers that we've already come up with, just so that you can see how indirect taxes fit into this big picture of government intervention. Okay, so here's the um, possible answers that we've already come up with for you. So if we just start at the top and work through this methodically, we'll take a quick look at factor immobility. Um, just remember that factor immobility can include geographical or um, occupational and possible interventions there in our, uh, from our perspective could be, for example, better investment in education and training um, or indeed better transport infrastructure. Public goods, remember there's complete market failure with a public good due to uh, it being non-rival and non-excludable. So the free market simply will not provide public goods. So what we tend to find for the public goods that we find uh, as being really essential is that the government will fund their provision. Uh, next one down there, negative externalities. Um, and some of you might have come across the concept of a demerit good. Um, which is really just to do with information failure, thinking that something is better for it, better for us than it actually is. And both of those types of market failure lead to overconsumption of products that are bad for us and society. So we've suggested there information campaigns, uh, minimum ages for consumption. So for example, rules and regulations, and then you can see they're in bold indirect taxes. So we'll come back in a few videos time as to exactly how indirect taxes work here. Next one down, positive externalities and merit goods. Um, now these are goods that are good for us. Um, and if they have positive externalities, then they're also good for other people, third parties. And in a free market, we tend to under consume those products. So here we might be looking at subsidies to make them cheaper and generally providing better information to people in the hopes that they will consume a little bit more. Information gaps. Uh, now this can tie in with both demerit and merit goods, but it's sometimes worth just thinking about it in its own right. Um, we just might make poor choices. There might be an imbalance and asymmetry of information uh, between different parties in a transaction. So a buyer might have more information than a seller or the other way around. Now, one way of getting around that is by providing uh, statutory information and compulsory labelling on items. For things that are bad for us, we could also use indirect taxes. And you can see that there in bold again, just as an indicator of how this topic fits into the bigger picture. Our final two uh, possible market failures at the bottom there, high relative poverty and monopoly power in a market. These might be topics that you've not explored a huge amount at this point in the course if you're in your in year, year 12. Um, a lot of teachers tend to cover these in year 13, but they are still types of market failure. And even just using a little bit of initiative, you were probably able to come up with something sensible there. So just take a moment to look through our suggested answers and just compare and contrast with what you have already chosen.